What's up, Bobcats? In this lecture, I'm going to go over pulmonary ventilation. So what pulmonary ventilation means is the act of breathing. So we're going to go over the mechanics of breathing and how this occurs. So the first thing that I want to uh, generally talk about is the difference between inspiration and expiration. So when we say inspiration, we're referring to the air that we're breathing in. So air is going into, uh, first off, it's going through the nasal cavity or through the oral cavity, passes through the trachea, further branches into the different, um, the different bronchus or the bronchi, and then it'll branch to the bronchioles, and then you'll finally get to the alveoli for the site of um, gas exchange. So from there, we're dumping off the oxygen that we inhale, and then um, once we get the gaseous uh, carbon dioxide, it's coming back up, so that way we can exhale that. So inspiration is air that's coming in, and then expiration is the air that goes out. Okay, so our target site for inspiration and expiration is the alveoli. This is the site for gas exchange. Okay, so the next thing I want to point out is the different uh, components that are involved during, um, during the act of breathing. So first off, you have the diaphragm and then you also have the intercostals. So when you're in the relaxed state, the, the diaphragm is in this dome position. But once we inspire the air, from there the diaphragm is going to flatten, it's going to contract. So we'll, we'll write this here. So during inspiration, the diaphragm is going to contract, which will result, it's going to flatten. So during inspiration. The external intercostals, so these are also going to contract. And the ones that are mainly involved here are the external intercostals. So the reason these intercostals are contracting is in order to create uh, more space. We're creating more space so that way the air can flow in and the, air, the lungs can be filled with air. So the next thing that I need to point out is the difference, the changes in pressure. So the changes in pressure, this is what's going to allow air to flow into the lungs because um, with gases, they flow from a high to a low concentration. So in order to lower the, the pressure within the lungs, uh, it's governed by one of the laws, which is known as one of the gas laws. It's known as Boyle's law. So Boyle's law states that there's an inverse relationship between pressure and volume, meaning that if we increase pressure, then it'll result in a decrease in volume and vice versa. If you decrease the pressure, it'll result in an increase in the volume. So when the diaphragm is flattened, we are creating more space. So let me uh, draw this out real quick. So these, this is gonna be the lungs here. Both of these are the lungs and the relaxed state. And then you inspire a bunch of air, so the diaphragm is going to flatten, the external intercostals are going to contract, and then these lungs become inflated with air. So because the diaphragm is going down and then as well as the external costals are contracting what this results, this results in an increase in the volume. So as a result, we get in a decrease in pressure. So because there's a, a decrease in pressure, air is allowed to flow here into the lungs and fill up the um, alveoli. So the net result we get air into the lungs. So what about during expiration? So this is going back in this direction. So during expiration, the diaphragm is going to, it's going to relax, and then it's gonna go back into its dome-shaped like structure. So then the next thing with the intercostals, they're going to relax once again the external intercostals, the changes in volume. So because we are decreasing the volume, 
there is going to be an increase in the pressure. So as the result, the air goes out. OK, so uh, one other thing to note. So during just like normal just tidal breathing, this is mainly going to be controlled by just the diaphragm um, flattening. There's not going to be as much contraction compared to when I forcefully breathe air in. The diaphragm is going to completely flatten, and then those external costals, they're, um, they have a good contraction there. OK, so the next thing we're going to discuss is the control of breathing and then also the changes in the airflow. So what controls breathing is, so coming off of the brainstem, more specifically the pons and the medulla, we have what's known as motor neurons. So these motor neurons are sending efferent signals that are going away from the central nervous system in order to um, innervate some of the muscles. So the muscles that we've already talked about, so for instance, the diaphragm, as well as the intercostals. So the, the peripheral nerves that are innervating both of these muscles include the phrenic nerve, as well as the intercostal nerve. So when these efferent, these motor neurons are sending their signal, this will result in the contraction of these muscles, so that way uh, we can breathe in uh, some of the air. So then how do we control the amount of air that's flowing into the, the different uh, bronchi and then also the bronchioles? Well, we have what's known as the pulmonary plexus. So the pulmonary plexus, it affects so first off, so bronchi, bronchioles, and it also affects some of the blood vessels. So we can change the diameter of the bronchi and the bronchioles because the pulmonary plexus is regulated by the autonomic nervous system. So if you remember the two different divisions, you have the sympathetic nervous system as well as the parasympathetic nervous system. So the classic example for the sympathetic is if you're running from a bear. So if you're running from a bear, we want to get oxygen um, to those tissue cells of the mus to the muscle tissue so that way the muscles can contract as well as we're increasing the uh, pumping of the blood by the heart. So for the sympathetic nervous system, because we're trying to get more air in, these, the different bronchi and the bronchioles, they're going to dilate to get more air in. Compared to parasympathetic, right after you have a meal and you're just relaxed, they're going to be, the diameter is going to be um, smaller, so it constricts. Okay, so that's going to do it for uh, pulmonary ventilation, the breathing mechanics.